Second Chances of the Soul by 55 Artists. Chapter 10. Norman Asborn. So, I've gathered you all here because I have another team mission, Tony announced. He decided that while it was definitely overkill to assemble the entire team to take down all Ridge Killian, it could be another team bonding experience. Plus, last time he had tried to take on Killian, Papa had almost died. As anyone not living under a rock know, there has been a new terrorist in town. The Mandarin. Because I am a genius with superior technology, I did some digging and found some inside info. Donny, you didn't hack into the military's files again, did you? We don't even have all the information yet, and... Rody began. Well, I am a hurt that you did not share information with me, honey bear. What I do know is far superior to the government. The Mandarin you see on TV? He's just an actor. The real Mandarin is a guy named Aldridge Killian. He is creating something called Extremis. It's something that allows people to regenerate, breathe fire, and a bunch of other confusing stuff. I'm speaking in layman's terms for everyone, but Brucey e. Bear, by the way. However, it's super unstable and can be used to cause explosions. Hence the quote unquote bombings, Tony stated. Now, Killian's got some lackeys with him at his testing site. And we can take them down by attacking them from behind and then throwing something at them, causing an explosion before they can regenerate. As Pepper would say, it's very violent, Tony finished. As the Avengers talked over the game plan, a warm feeling came to Tony. If we keep the team together from the start, then the Civil War won't happen. And we won't divide when the Purple Grape comes. We'll be ready and no one has to die. We can do this together. While Steve created a more detailed plan of the attack, Tony kept his quippy comments to himself. He trusted Steve, and knew that winging it wasn't always the best strategy. But when Loki chimed in with his own ideas, quick, Tony was quick to fire back with insults. Loki was the one person that Tony did not care about offending. This guy destroyed my tower while invading New York. He deserves it. Granted he was under mind control, but still, ugh, details. Just because he's not evil anymore doesn't mean I have to like the guy. He's far too dramatic, whiny, and egocentric for me. It's so hard to like someone who is nothing like you. Jarvis, locate all people with an extremist signature, Tony instructed his AI. Use the Iron Legion. You know what to do with them. Tony, over here, Steve called. Steve held up his vibranium shield as Tony fired his repulsors, reflecting them off the shield, taking two down two of the extremist soldiers. What the fuck? How are there this many extremist soldiers? There's got to be at least 50 of them here. What made Killian create so many this time around? It seems like every good change I create creates more problems. Tony felt panic attack coming on. Calm down. Calm down. you got to focus. Tony took a deep breath before firing more extremist soldiers. Tony, I thought you said Killian had a few lackeys. This looks like a lot more than that. Clint said as he fired an explosive arrow. Well, Legolas, there's a reason I brought backup. I thought a secret agent like yourself would understand somebody on the inside information doesn't get the whole story. Never realised you were such a complainer, Tony joked. Shut up, Tin Can, Hawkeye responded. And considering the fact that the inside information came from you, it just seems like you admitted that you were wrong. Tony and Clint continued to quit back and forth, which event actually helped Tony with his anxiety. Thank God for Clint. Not that I'll ever tell him that. Meanwhile, Tony noticed that the Hulk was having a grand time smashing the firemen, while Thor followed closely behind, st destroying the soldiers while Mjolnir. Hulk loves smashing firemen! Tony, I have eyes on Killian. Loki, Rhodey and I are going in. Natasha informed. Hold on, I'm coming too. I'd like to have a word with this dickwad, Tony said. Tony flew off the roof that Killian was standing on, joining Loki, Rhodey, and Natasha. Well, 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 if it isn't the great Tony Stark. Killian sneered. Oh, have the tables have turned. You thought I was just some weak little nerd who wasn't worth the time. But now look at me. I am the Mandarin, Killian declared. Okay, in hindsight, I probably should have told you that I was busy, instead of having you wait on that roof. For that, as much as I hate to do this, I apologise. And, and I never apologise. But you're the one who decided it was a good idea to become a domestic terrorist, all because I skipped a meal 
one time while I was drunk off my ass. I'm all for turning bad experiences into strength, but attacking a school full of children, my children, that's just cowardly. Tony responded, you mess with my kids, you die. Simple as that. Oh, we're not with the monologues. Loki complained just as Killian was about to respond. Let's just kill this insolent little weasel and call it a day, shall we? Loki swiftly used his energy projection magic to hit Killian with an energy blast, while Rhodey used a repulsor to destroy Killian's body before he could regenerate. Well, that was anticlimactic, stated Tony. So you're telling me that you had trouble killing this guy in your past life? Loki asked incredulously. And you call yourself a warrior? He scoffed. Well, now we know which of us is the true superior. Well, it's easy to finish the job when someone, aka me, has already laid out all the groundwork. Not of all of us can be Norse gods, Tony responded irritatedly. What the hell are they talking about? Tony heard Rhodey ask Natasha while he and Loki were at it again. I have no idea, but if those two eccentric idiots might want to shut up and talk about this at another time. Natasha responded. She gave the two feuding men a look that said, shut up before you fuck up the timeline all because of your endless pissing contest. Tony immediately quieted down. Loki quickly followed suit. That didn't stop them from continuing to glare at each other. Man of iron, we have defeated the rest of the soldiers, Thor informed Tony. All right, we need to blow this place up so that no way, no, no other idiot from my past decides to use it and become a supervillain. Cap, get everyone on the Quinjet. Tony instructed. Copy that, Tony. St Cap replied. All right, everyone's here. Jarvis, search the building and see if there's anyone here. Tony said. All clear, boss. Jarvis replied. You know what to do. In other news, billionaire Tony Stark has donated a generous $5 million to the Midtown School of Science and Technology to help rebuild after the Mandarin attack, Anderson Cooper rep reported on CNN. However, despite this generous donation, Midtown School is said to be closed for the next month as the building is restored. Classes are said to be continued online until further notice. Peter watched the TV screen as he sat beside Tony in the waiting room at Oscord Industries. Oh, I can't believe we still have classes online. I thought the one good thing that would come out of a supervillain attack would be that school would be cancelled. Peter complained. Ned, Harley and I were going to work on the Republic dropship that you just bought us. Just as Peter saw Tony open his mouth to respond, Norman Osborne walked out with a young boy who looked to be about Peter's age. Mr. Stark, how wonderful to see you again. Norman said tersely looking like it pained him to be cordial. Well, I wish I could say the same, Normie, but you've always been an arsehole, while I am amazing. So I guess the pleasure's all yours. Tony responded, clearly not caring about faking niceties. Both Peter and the young boys next to Norman start, started snorting in amusement. Harry! Norman scolded. I don't believe you've met my son, Harry. He's not the brightest, but he can, and he can be a bit of a nuisance. But I am hoping one day he'll mature enough to be able to run the company. Peter noted the way Norman looked at Harry was far different from the way Tony looked at Peter. While well, Tony looked at Peter with nothing but admiration, Norman looked at Harry in pure disdain. Oh my gosh, Mr. Normie, I mean, Mr. Norman, or Mr. Osborne? Mr. Osborne, Peter stuttered nervously. I'm a huge fan, like, you're a genius scientist. Uh, your work on thank you young man norman caught peter off and who might you be this is my kid peter he's here to make sure i don't go completely insane while i'm here tony responded i'm parker i mean i i i'm peter parker peter stuttered at the same time am i correct in remembering that he attends midtown school of science and technology that is a very prestigious school. You must be very intelligent. It is unfortunate that the attack happened there. Perhaps Harry here could learn a thing or two from Mr. Parker, Norman said. Harry rolled his eyes. You know, if you didn't want to have a kid, you could have kept your junk to yourself. 
Norman smacked Harry with a stack of papers he was holding. That's enough out of you. Norman shot Harry a death glare. Why don't the boys go and play? While well, the two of us discuss business. I don't know. I don't. I really don't want to leave Peter walking around unsupervised. Tony began. Mr. Stark, I'll be fine. It sounds like fun. Peter assured him. Okay, fine. But if you need me at all, then it, it, even if it's just because you can't find your juice box, have Jarvis notify me. So Tony, Dad, I mean, Mr. Stark, I'll be fine. I'm not a little kid. Peter protested. Just promise me that you won't go anywhere you aren't supposed to go. I know you have a habit of doing that. I promise. Seriously, Mr. Stark, nothing's going to happen, said Peter. Line break. So, what's your deal with Tony Stark? Harry asked Peter. What do you mean? Peter wondered. Well, he's obviously no family man. Any magazine released in the past 20 years will tell you that. So, what is it? Some kind of PR stunt? Does your family get paychecks from the great Tony Stark in return? Harry said. What? No! Mr. Stark, Aunt May and Uncle Ben would never do that. Mr. Stark just offered me an internship when we met, and we connected. He is nothing what people think. He is awesome, and he really cares about helping people. He's like a dad to me. He wouldn't do that. Peter defended his mentor. Hmm. From what I hear about him, he probably has a bunch of real kids out there that he never bothered to meet. I doubt he'd actually want to take in two random kids for no reason. But who knows? I could be wrong. I know that my dad only had me so his heir could take over the company, Harry said. Peter went quiet as he took in Harry's words. Could he be right? I mean, why would Tony want a kid like me? Peter then realised it had been a while since he had lost his thoughts. Harry disappeared. Harry, where are you? Peter called out nervously. Harry, this isn't funny. Peter continued wandering around the building. But Harry was nowhere to be found. Whoa! Is that a lab? I mean, I know Tony told me not to go anywhere I'm not supposed to. But it would be so cool to see a real Oscorp lab. Peter hid behind a wall. As he watched a worker enter a passcode to the lab. Peter carefully looked around before entering the same passcode in entering the lab himself. Whoa! This is so awesome! Peter gushed as he took in the high-tech facility. Suddenly, he felt a sharp pain on the back of his neck. Ow! was that? Peter asked as he instinctively slapped the area where the pain had come from. Ew, it's a spider. I hate spiders. Peter exclaimed as he wiped the spider's remains on the lab table. Dr. Connors, we have been making tremendous progress. A woman's voice echoed through the lab. Oh man, I should get out of here before someone sees me. Mr. Stark will kill me if I get caught. Peter quickly ran to the door and sprinted out. Peter! There you are! I've been looking for you! Harry called out. Where did you go? You just disappeared without telling me! Peter said, Um, I did tell you. I said I was going to get us both sodas, remember? Harry replied, Oh! Yeah, right, Peter said. Sorry. Peter took the Pepsi that Harry handed him. We should probably get back to my dad's office. They're probably about done by now. Harry said, Hey, Peter, you okay? You look a little green. I'm okay. I probably just didn't get enough sleep last night. Peter said, trying to hide the fact that he was shivering. I'm hot and cold at the same time. My oh, man, I don't hope I don't have a fever. I was supposed to go over to Ned's house tomorrow. Hey, Pete. Are you doing all right there? Tony asked as Happy was driving them home. I'm fine, Mr. Stark. Peter replied tersely. In actuality, his head was pounding. It sounded like Happy had the radio station up to 100. Happy, can you turn that off? Happy looks confused but obliged. What's the matter, kid? Don't you like ACDC? What? I thought that was Led Zeppelin. Peter asked, discomfort momentarily forgotten. Kid, that statement right there is a crime against humanity. That hurts my soul, kid. Don't make me regret getting you that internship. Tony joked. Peter didn't know if it was the unbearable pain he was in that caused his little outburst, but suddenly he snapped. If you don't want me in the first place, 
Shouldn't you have just ignored me at the other at that expo? What am I? Your charity case? Or is this some kind of PR stunt so the media will think you actually have an ounce of humanity in you? Whoa. Kid, where is this coming from? And to answer your question, I took you in because I saw a better version of myself in you. I have believed in you since the day I met you. And you've brought me nothing but joy. You're an amazing kid, Peter. And I love you. Because blood or not, you're my kid. Nothing will change that. Tony put his arm around Peter before feeling his forehead. Jeez, kid, you're burning up. Jarvis, what's his temperature? 102 degrees, sir. Jarvis replied. All right, Pete, when, you, when we get home, you're going straight to bed. You need rest. And rest means rest, not working on some random science experiment. A capiche? Oh my gosh, Mr. Stark, I'm so sorry. I didn't know what got into me. I just really don't feel good right now. And Harry said something earlier and I couldn't get it out of my head and I... Peter rambled. Shh. Just go to sleep. It's okay. And whatever Harry said is based on his shitty relationship with that Norman Asborn. I honestly surprised that Norman was able to raise a kid that turned out somewhat normal looking. The point is, whatever dumb theories Harry has about me aren't true. I love you for you. Jarvis reclined Peter's chair. He needs to rest. Will do, sir, Jarvis replied. End of chapter. Hi, guys. Hope you enjoyed that because that's an interesting chapter, isn't it? Peter's powers, the spider bite. Poor Harry as well. Norman Osborn does not seem like a fun guy, does he? And um, I'm glad Peter had that little outburst because while it's horrible, it does clean up things that people would say about him eventually. Anyway, remember to like, comment and subscribe. And hit the bell to get notified for whenever I upload. And remember to have a good day, night or whatever time zone you're in. Bye my guys, gals and non-binary pals. I'll see you in another video. Bye.